حدثنا محمد بن عبيد الله قال حدثنا عبد العزيز بن ابي حازم عن نبيه عن ابي حازم عن سهل بن سعد رضي الله عنه قال This is the Miqat from Medina, yes. Dhul Hulayfa. Going into the Ihram state. So you just have to pray. You don't have to pray. But it's recommended to pray before, pray before then make the the the, the aqtaniyah afterwards. Mm. We call it locking in. That's what locking in. in. Locking in. Saying Allahumma. Allahumma rabbika umrah. That's the lock in. Once you're in that, khalas. Click, click. Oh, you're in there. Keys are done. You're in the zone. Tunnel Get rid of it. Tunnel. Rabbika Allahumma umrah. Allahumma rabbika umrah. Allahumma rabbika umratan. Fin habasini habis. From a hilly high school, Habastani. You need to do that right now. If you forget or you didn't do it, you're going to have a problem. Brothers, starting now, do not cover your heads. Don't trim your fingernails. Don't pluck anything. No oil, no perfume, no lotion. Nothing that's normal. If you forget, if you cover your head accidentally, no sin upon you, no kafara, no animal that you have to slaughter. If it's a mistake, if you meant to do this, no sin upon you. If you have a snag nail, it's permissible to, to remove the snag nail. But no trimming of your finger or toenails. No, that's easy. Miss Wack is totally fine. Miss Wack is recommended all of the time, 24-7. Does anybody have any other questions or concerns? For them. Someone asked about under, underwear, underclothing. So I just wanted you to clarify that to them. No underwear for men. If you have a medical condition, you have to wear underpants or, or, or some type of, you know, something, you know, whatever you got going on. It's lawful to wear, but you must make the fitia. You must pay for a sheep to be slaughtered and given out to the poor people of Mecca. If you have to wear socks, they say you have a, a skin condition, you have some type of uh, ailment or illness, you get very cold, you have to wear socks, wear them, but you have to pay the fitia. As soon as we get past here, at the end of the masjid, you guys start your talbiyah. You start your talbiyah, inshallah. <laughs> Inna alhamdulillah, wa niyamata, la ka wal mut, la sharika lak, la la He says, al He says, al He says, He says, He هو واجب بإجماع الأمة وهو نصف الإيمان فإن الإيمان نصفان نصف صبر ونصف شكر He says from the meanings from the secrets from the dimensions from the stations or the chambers the levels of that ayah that you recite in the Quran إياك نعبدو وإياك نستعين is the station or the level or the chamber of suffer, of patience and perseverance. Imam Ahmed he said that suffer has been mentioned in the Quran in approximately 90 places. 90 times Allah has spoken about, talked about, addressed, commanded, encouraged, praised, suffer. Just think about that now. For something to be mentioned in the Quran once, that shows its status and its importance, or its danger. For Allah to mention a thing two times, three times, five times, 
10 times. But 90 times, it's almost 100 times, someone is brought up and spoken about. Showing you is peerless status. Nothing is going to be similar to that. Ibn Qayyim, he says, furthermore, patience, practicing sabr, is mandatory. No Muslims differ on the obligation of sabr. It's wedge, it's consensus of all of the Muslims. The different ethnicities, the backgrounds, the schools of thought, the sex, this, this, and that. Everybody agrees that sabr is mandatory. Furthermore, sabr is half of your iman, half of your faith. And that's because iman has two halves, two parts. Half of it is patience, and half of it is thankfulness. Ponder on that. There's never a time in which you aren't between one of these two. Patient, persevere, thankful, grateful. And if you're totally void, if you're not going back and forth between one of these two, then that would mean you have, and Allah protect us from that. So the believer is always going to be, quote unquote, ping pong. Yeah, like a pinball machine, right? The ball is, has to be what? Constantly what? Hit and moving. What happens when the ball is still, when the ball isn't being slapped around and moving? What happens to it? Huh? You lose. That's the whole point of the pinball machine, right? The, the, that ball is always tapped around. Is it always on the right side? Is it always on the left side? But it's always what? Up, down, back and forth, in and out, hitting this thing, bouncing on this thing, but it has to be touched by one of those two tappers. Is this not the case? So just think about that. Your iman, your life as a Muslim, is always going to be between sabr, shukr, shukr, sabr. Ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah mercy upon him, he says, وَهُوَ مَذْكُورٌ فِي الْقُرْآنِ عَلَى سِتَّةِ عَشَرَ نَوْعًا There are 16 categories, types, divisions, or classes of sabr in the Qur'an. 16. Stay with me now, Hassan. We're going to memorize all 16. Number one. عَلَى أَوَّلُ الْعَمْرُ بِهِ نَحْمُ قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ عَمْرُ سَتَعِينُ بِسَبْرِ وَسَحَرَى وقوله واستعينوا بالصبر والصلاه وقوله اصبروا وصابروا وقوله واصبروا ما صبرك الا بالله So the first style the first Quranic style of sabr is Allah commanding us to have it and to do it Al-Amr bi is the command with sabr In the Quran we mention several ayat in the Quran in which Allah commands either the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or the companions, the Muslims, the believers, with sabr. So the first way that sabr is mentioned in the Quran is with what? The command to have it. Athani anahyu anzidihi ke qawlihi fasbir kima sabra ulul azmi min al-rusul wa la tasta'jimu wa qawlihi wa la tawalluhum al-adbaa fa inna tawliyat al-adbaa di tarqun lisabri wa al-musabarati wa qawlihi wa la tubtilu a'malakum فإن إبطالها ترك الصبر على إتمامها وقوله فلا تهنوا ولا تحزنوا فإن الوهن من عدم الصبر. The second Quranic style is the prohibition of its opposite. In other words, the first style is to have it. The second Quranic style is never ever to be caught what? Without it. Everybody understand this? The exact opposite. Now Ibn Qayyim. He mentioned several ayats. Listen to these ayat. The first ayat he says, Fasbim kema sabra ulul azmi min al rusuli wa la tasta'jilahu. Allah says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which translated to mean, Be patient, O Muhammad, like the messengers of firm determination were patient before you. Wa la tasta'jilahu. And don't be too hasty. Don't try to be hasty above and before them. La tasta'jilahu. So the first part of the ayah goes back to the first style, is the command of sabr. And the latter part of the ayah is the second, the, op the prohibition of the opposite of sabr. If a person tells you to do a thing and then prohibits you from the opposite, that is total emphasis. Tie your shoes and never walk outside with your shoes untied. There's no room for confusion or for doubt or for ambiguity. Tie your shoes, uh, you know, have on nice shoes. Tie your shoes, I thought you meant, you know, sometimes. Tie your shoes, 
and never what? leave the house with your shoes on time. If you disobey that command that your mother gives you, then the problem isn't with her, but it's with you. Because she told you to do a thing, and she prohibited you what? From the opposite. Everybody clear on that. Then Ibn Qayyim, he mentions the ayah in which Allah Azza wa Jal says, He says, he quotes here, that Allah Azza wa he says, Do not show them your backsides. Don't show them your backsides, meaning don't run on the battlefield. And this ayah, does it mention, don't be hasty, don't have, or don't be caught without sabr, does it say that? It doesn't say that, right? So, what is Ibn Al-Qayyim, how is he using this verse to prove his point? You can't hear. What is Ibn Al-Qayyim, how is he using this verse? Allah says, show them not your backsides. What's meant, uh, how is that being used? To state the opposite. The opposite, but Sabr is not mentioned here. He didn't mention anything about patience. The eye says nothing about patience. What's the answer? Okay, what about being firm? We're not talking about firmness, we're talking about Sabr. Running away, cowardice shows a lack of patience. Everybody hearing this? Turning your backs, showing your enemy your backs, running, fleeing, cowering, it shows a lack of patience upon the pain of wounds, of injury, being martyred, being killed. It takes patience to lose. Everybody can win, you know. The thrill of victory, as they say. But the agony of what? Defeat. It hurts. It's bitter. When you win a game, you travel back home on the bus or plane, the flight or the bus ride is going to be quick. Everybody's laughing. Everybody's having fun. But you lose the championship, that bus ride back home is long and agonizing. You can't cry and quit and whine and, and, and whimper, but you got that one. So, now, a very interesting uh, issue with regards to this ayah here about the Prophet Sallallahu he said in the authentic hadith, Ishtanibu Saba al Mubiqat. Avoid the seven destructive sins. And from those seven destructive sins, is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, or is what the Prophet said, what tawalli yawm al And running on the day of battle, the battlefield. Now we all know is that there is a time in which the Muslims are allowed to run. When it's a gross, they're grossly outnumbered. But if that isn't the case, a little bit of out being outnumbered, etc., let alone equal force, you have to stay in the fight no matter what. Now think about this now, it's a necessity to run versus it isn't a necessity. You capitulated too quickly, you could have been a little more patient. The, the opposite side, the enemy, their flank was about to collapse. They were about to run out of ammo, they were about to run out of arrows, whatever. All you had to do is just work, have a little more patience and you could have broken the line. Speaking in the terms of the old uh, battles. Now there was an army, or some people they say, that um, the Mongols, whenever they went into the battlefield, some of the soldiers wore armor. It wasn't heavy metal armor, but it was leather armor. And they would make the armor sufficient for the soldier's chest, his helmet, etc. But they would leave the back of the soldier without any armor. And some historians would think or feel that you know they, they ran out of material. And in most cases, it's just no. But they intentionally left the soldier without armor to inhibit him from what? From running. You turn around, you run, and nothing is going to brunt the, the impact of that arrow, piercing your back, going into your lungs, into your vital organs. So they wanted to, to think about that mindset. Running away, showing the enemy your back is shameful. It can't be done. Think about that. Another uh, piece of food for thought is with regards to the different battles that were fought between uh, the Prophet Muhammad and the Sahaba and the Mushrikeen, the pagans of Mecca, and also some of the battles that were fought between some of the Sahaba after the Prophet had left uh, and some of the Persians or some of the Byzantine Christians. And they say, the reports say, is that 
oftentimes the uh, the soldiers, the Arab soldiers, whether they, whether they were Muslim, whatever, they would bring women with them. The women would travel with them to the battlefield, and the women would sing or recite poetry or whatever the case may be. And if the men were to run and to turn their backs, their women would throw stones at them and they would shame them, they would disgrace them, they would embarrass them. Showing or proving the concept that fleet, running, being a coward is unacceptable. You may lose, you may, you may, you know, keep your life, but your honor is what? Just going for it. Imagine that. You, you, your wife see you, your wife telling you to stay, stay, you coward, stay, stay firm. How's your relationship going to be afterwards with your wife? <laughs> so, cowardice is a major manifestation of what? Lack of patience. And another issue with regards to this is suicide. Whatever your reason is behind suicide, or thinking about suicide, or wanting to commit suicide, whatever it is, it's a manifestation of lack of patience. Whatever you're going through in your life, you have to have supper. It's your fault, it's messed up, blah, blah, blah. You have to have what? Supper. And it's easy and quick to just say, I quit and I give up. So that's food for thought. Number three. Or after that, Ibn Qayyim, he mentioned, uh, Don't render your deeds no. Once again, Allah Azza here, he doesn't say anything about patience. Allah tells us, don't ruin your deeds. What does this mean? How does not ruin, ruining one's deeds, how does that pertain to supper? Or the, the prohibition of having a lack of supper? Huh. Is that when a person makes an act of very bad death and he quits, he gives up, that shows a lack of what? Patience to finish that event. <laughs> Moving forward, Allah Azza wa Jalla, He also says, "For that tehino, when that tahzanu, Allah says, don't take things easy on your enemy. Don't be slacked or laxed. I mean, lax and lazy." Nor be sad. Once again, let's talk about the battlefield. Full court ahead. Keep your foot on the gas pedal. Don't quit. Don't give up. Keep moving forward. And don't be sad about those who lost their lives, those who were injured, those who are wounded, or even some of your setbacks and some of your defeats. We lost in yesterday's uh, skirmish. It's a new day. Yesterday we had severe casualties. Don't be sad. You have to keep moving forward. Athali through the third Quranic style of Sabr, he says, Salam Rahmatullahi the third Quranic style, Allah not commanding us to do it, not prohibiting us from its opposite, but Allah praising the people of Sabah, mentioning their virtue and their status. From that is Allah's statement, As-Sabirin, the patient, the Sadiqin, the truthful. Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions wa sabirin fil basai wa darai wa hin al bas. Those who are patient when they are harmed, when they're bothered, when they're annoyed, when they're losing, wa hin al basi, and at the time of fight. And once again, you see the consistency between sabr and what? You see, it's a consistent theme. It's a major part of it. And if there was any time in which you needed to be patient, you would definitely need to be patient during what? time of war, battle. And that's applicable to all types of fighting and, and battle and war. Physical, metaphysical, it's a fight, it's a rumble with your nafs, with the external enemy, etc, etc. You have to be patient. Moving forward. And he says, and this is abundant in the Quran. So many verses which Allah praises those who are patient. Number four is that Allah tells us that His love, Allah's love, is binding and mandatory for the Sabidi. He has ordained it, He has written it. Those who are patient, they'll receive my love. Al Khamisu, and He mentions an ayah to prove that. Number five, Ijabu ma'iyatihi lahum, wa hi ma'iyatun khasa, tatadamanu hibdahum, 
ونصرهم وتأييدهم ليست معية عامة وهي معية العلم والإحاطة كقوله واصبروا فإن الله مع الصابرين وقوله والله مع الصابرين Number five Allah declares that he is with those who are patient and that he will be with them it's binding, it's a must and it isn't the general sense of Allah being with the servant Allah knows everything, Allah sees everything, Allah hears everything Allah is with his servants, he's close to his servants that's with everybody but this is specific, exclusive and what's meant by Allah being with the servant here, those who are patient is that he will support them, he will give them victory He'll bless them in whatever they take or whatever endeavor they uh, they go after, they, they 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 search for whatever they're whatever they're dealing with. Moving forward, As-Sadisu ikhbaruhu bi anna sabra khayru min ashabihi fi qawlihi wa la sabartum lahu khayru min sabirin wa intasbiru khayru lakum. Ibn Qayyim says number six Allah tells us is that being patient is best when you have the choice between taking revenge stopping, quitting, even running on the battlefield it's always better to do what? to be patient bottom line it's always best and most excellent to have supper and he mentions the ayat regarding that السابعون إجابوا الجزاء لهم بأحسن أعمالهم في قوله تعالى ولنرزين الذين صبروا أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون. The seventh is that Allah makes it binding for them to receive the best of their rewards, the best reward for the best of their deeds. Not a reward for a good deed, but the best thing that Allah can give you. For the best of your deeds, the elite deeds that you performed. And he mentions the ayat regarding that. And Nukaimi then says, Athamin, Ijabuhu subhanahu al jazaarahum bi gaydi hisab. Kikawrihi ta'ala, inna ma yuwafa sabirun ajrahum bi gaydi hisab. Number eight, Allah Azza wa Jalla, He makes it binding that they will receive their reward bi gaydi hisab. Without any limit, no cap, no restriction. Unlimited reward, unlimited blessing, unlimited forgiveness, unlimited ridwan. Right? There's no bottom to it. There's no ceiling to it. Atasi rule number nine. Intlaq al bushra li ahl al sabri. Ki qawlihi ta'ala. ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجور ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين. ابن القيم says that glad tidings belong. See the camera over there, guys, on the left.